What's up y'all, Mark Smith, JBS Training Group. Let's talk about uh, six millimeter arc. So, um, been testing some arc stuff now for the better part of uh, a little over a year and kind of have fallen in love with the idea of the cartridge as it pertains to my personal uses for it. So I just kind of wanted to hit on um, some topics of like why six arc over the other offerings, uh, why in the configuration that I have it in, what does it do that the 5.56 five, gun uh, lacks, you know, all, all these different things that kind of leave people wondering why in the world they would ever choose to go to another cartridge other than something similar to 556. Five, um, so right off the bat, man, you got to realize where I'm, I'm speaking from. Flat out, I don't think everybody needs six arc. I don't even think most people need six arc. Um, but for what I do and how I use rifles and the, and the way that I think about rifle use as it pertains to the practical use of a, a citizen in the civilized United States, right? This is hunting, competing, potentially uh, defense of life or innocent, innocent life. Um, it just makes a ton of sense, like when you start to kind of add up the way that I'm doing this. So I uh, kind of wanted to hit some stuff right off the bat. Um, most of the time, you'll see guys say, well, what can 6 arc do that 5.56 five, can't do? So, so let's hit that, and then we'll talk about 5.56 five, versus 6 arc and what it can't do, so on and so forth. Um, so 6 arc is basically a 6 millimeter Projo stuffed into a tapered casing that makes a 105 to 108 grain bullet in the factory loadings. Um, well, sorry, 103 to 108 grain. Um, fly really, really fast. And it does it really well uh, as far as ballistic coefficients concerned. And I won't get into all the ins and outs of ballistics and kind of the weird nerdy stuff. Uh, I'll just tell you this, six arc flies farther better than 5.56. Five, and it does so out of even a shorter barrel. So uh, what we end up with when we talk about 5.56 five, guns in a, a 14.5 to 16 to maybe even 18 inch configuration is a Projo that, that is projectile that runs out of gas as far as being like the way I would want to do this. Like if I could truly choose the best case scenario, we uh, we end up running out of gas somewhere around the 600 yard range typically. Now I'm totally aware that you and your brother Leroy can hit a thousand yards with your 5.56 five, gun. I got it, right? But that don't make it the best way to do it. I can hit 500 with a slingshot if you give me enough tries, but that don't make it the best way to do it. Um, so it's not that I'm saying 5.56 five, is incapable. I'm simply saying it's not as capable, right? Um, so when we get out past around 500 yards and we start to look at the, 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 the bleed off of the velocity and how light the, uh, the typical 5.56 five, loadings are, even on the heavier side, 77 grain, 75 grain, 70 grain, and we start to kind of look at what's happening to them um, environmentally. Environmentally, they're beginning to be, become more affected by external factors, right? This is wind um, and other atmospherics that the 105 to 108 grain offerings, 103 to 108 grain, sorry, I'll get that right in a minute, uh, are not as affected by as much as early kind of thing, right? Now, wind is still affecting it, right? It, it, the, the atmospherics are always gonna affect it. Uh, it's just how much and, and how long can I get away with it before it starts to become difficult, if you will. Um, so a good little example for this, if, if you go to a DMR match or, or even a precision gas gun match where you're going to be shooting out to a thousand yards, uh, just for the sake of our arbitrary argument. Um, and, and at 700 yards, they've got a reduced C-zone piece of steel or something similar and the berm behind it, right? The berm behind that piece of steel is 10 feet wide, right? Um, if you make a bad wind call or a wrong wind call or a, you know, a wind call that you, you th really thought it was this, but it ain't kind of thing with a 5.56 five, gun, the potential for how far off you are is increased pretty dramatically compared to something like the arc. Excuse me. Um, if you believe the wind's pushing you where you need to hold a half mil, but you're wrong, and you get pushed off of that berm, you've now missed and you don't even know where you missed at. Um, typically, with something like the arc, 308 anything heavier that's not as affected by wind um as as dramatically what we'll see is i made a bad wind call but it, it it's it's still enough to to be on the berm right and so i can get a little bit of an idea of some splash or something through the scope when it impacts to let me know what i need to do the miss is not as egregious as it as it is with uh with a 556 five, gun 
Um, also, add a match. Whether or not you hit the target falls solely on the spotter or the RO that's calling hit, right? Sometimes these matches can be kind of loud. Sometimes they can be hard to hear, hard to see. When you take a little 70 grain projectile and you throw it at a target 600 yards away and it hits a full size Iron Maiden, sometimes you don't necessarily see that really, really well. Uh, you also may not hear it really, really well. So having a larger projectile impacting uh, and, and putting greater force into that target to make it louder, make it more uh, splash more, that, that kind of stuff can help with getting hit, right? Uh, as opposed to the other offerings. That's another thing, right? Um, and that's not always the case. It's not even mostly the case. It's just it, every now and then you'll find that, right? Um, you get into size. So what I've got here is um, a 16 inch Centurion 556 gun and a 12 and a half inch Centurion 6 Arc gun. Now the 16 inch is suppressed with a Knight's mini can and the Centurion is, is suppressed with a, uh, a full size KGM uh, six millimeter suppressor. So talk about the differences in that. All right, y'all, so the 556er, five, five, um, twice 23, 556. This thing with this can is throwing 77 grain projos at somewhere around 2,600 feet per second, give or take 10 feet, depending on what's going on. Um, so I can I can take this, this full-size 16-inch longer gun, which is totally manageable, right, no problem, and I can work towards 600, 700, 800 yards as best I can, throwing these tiny projectiles far away, you know, 2,600 feet per second, 77 grain projo, okay? Or I can reach over here and grab this little guy that is significantly smaller, right? Significantly smaller, and it's throwing 106 grain projectiles at 2,420 feet per second. Um, so I've got a smaller overall gun, it's easier to manage, easier to go in and out of ports with, easier to kind of manipulate, <laughs> but it's it's doing the same thing that this one does. It's actually doing it a little better uh, because the heavier Projo is gonna maintain its flight path easier, it's gonna maintain its velocity easier, and it's gonna hit with a little more authority and help me get a hit easier. Also, when hunting in the backwoods, man, I walk. I don't sit in a stand very much. Uh, I don't like that. It, it makes me get antsy, I can't do it. Um, I hear that gets better with age, but I'd much rather carry this uh, little tiny lightweight gun than I would that. Also, when you smack a critter with something like this, um, the results terminally are very evident. Um, now, whether or not you're you're one of the guys that believes in energy or, or whatever, right? Once again, I'm not a terminal ballistics expert, uh, but it, it makes sense to me that if you take a Toyota sedan going 2,500 miles an hour, and a school bus going 2,400 miles an hour that the school bus will likely do more damage, right? So that's kind of the way I'm <laughs> quantifying this. Redneck ballistics for you. Um, and I, can, I, I can't tell you anything like scientifically, you know, or whatever, but I can tell you the critters that I, I've, I've hit with 106 grain tap at 2420 have been demonstrably more savage hits internally than 77 grain uh, or 70 grain or whatever. Now, I know there's some guys screaming at their computer, you gotta use the right bullet. I got it. Uh, I've also shot critters with 70 grain TSX, 62 grain TSX, 77 grain um, Atlanta arms, you know, things like that. And I'm telling you, the results just aren't, they're just not the same. All right, so we've chit-chatted about the pluses of six arc. It seems to be better terminally on living things. It seems to hit targets harder, which helps with getting a hit at a match. It helps with um, the, the ballistic coefficient, it helps it fly sh straighter, longer, right? Um, one of the things I failed to mention a while ago, six arc is uh, out of a 12.5 at the speeds that we're talking about is remaining supersonic to around 800, 850 yards, whereas the, uh, the 16 inch 5.56 gun is bleeding into the uh, subsonic range at around 700 or maybe just shy of that. So uh, it, it just, it stays, it's a better cartridge to shoot farther away. That's it, right? Now, uh, why 6-Arc over 6.5 Grendel? Well, uh, because 6.5 Grendel doesn't come in as many match cartridge offerings, um, and it just won't hang with the Arc at distance. So uh, Grendel and Arc tend to become separated somewhere around 700, 800 yards. 
Uh, Grendel's a great cartridge, right? It, it does what it was designed to do, but the ARC just does it a little bit better, in my opinion. Everybody's got one, right? What does the, uh, forgive the rooster, he can't help himself. What, what does the ARC do um, that, that might not be a good thing, right? Uh, where does 556 five, kind of take the lead? Well, obviously, there's more offerings of more stuff in the 556 five, round based on the fact that it's been around longer and it's the more commonplace offering, right? So there's more parts, there's more support, there's more just everything, right? It's, it's the Glock of, of the rifle world. Uh, you can get everything for it. Um, we also have figured out how to make this thing exceptionally, exceptionally reliable. Um, with good mags, good guns, those things will just run and run and run and run and run. Um, six arc for some has been kind of iffy. I think that a lot of this is based on the fact that <laughs> most dudes are, are not buying very high quality parts, right? They're just buying something to get them into the cartridge and they end up with a couple of parts that have a, a tolerance spec that's a little on the, the high side of uh, what we'd like and, and we end up with, with things like feeding issues, extraction issues, gassing issues, etc. Now. I've been very fortunate. I have uh, three six millimeter arc rifles and they've all been great. Um, they all run on an A5 system. Uh, that's pr been pretty exclusive. I have found that once you go to a carbine system, it gets kind of eh, kind of hitchy. Um, and also the magazines become kind of an issue with six arc. People have had issues finding good magazines. Again, I've been very fortunate. I've used ASC, Brenton, Duramag, um, basically all of the offerings that are available and I've had pretty good luck with them. Duramag is kind of my go-to because I think it's a good blend of size and capacity um, with reliability. I don't like the gun to be super, super big. Um, as you might can tell, that's why I like the 12.5 stuff. Um, so I, I don't like the, the ASC 30 rounders, which are truly like 28 rounders. Um, I'm, I'm typically more of like a 15 to 20 round kind of guy when it comes to, to most, most rifles. Um, so the 556 gun is going to be more reliable by default. Uh, the bolt faces aren't going to be breaking and shearing off like the six arc ones are by default. It's, uh, it has to do with the design of the bolt face and how we've got to get thinner material on the outside of the lock and lugs uh, just because the case head is, is going to be larger, things like that. But, you know, once you kind of get over all of those, those growing pains and those, <clears throat> those things that, that can cause issues and you get them fixed, um, these guns are, are pretty reliable. I haven't had a hiccup with a six arc gun at a match or, or while shooting for score in, in quite some time. Uh, and the hiccups that I did have were not, I'm not going to call them a fault of the cartridge. I'm going to call them a fault of the company that manufactured the part that failed, right? Um, now, if, if the same company were to manufacture the same part in 556, would it fail as often as, as frequently? Probably not, just by, by design, right? But I really do think that subpar materials and subpar tooling and subpar human interface is what caused my failures, not the arc itself, um, not not the, the actual cartridge. Um, so that's what I got on that. Um, guys, I think that if you want a rifle that you can make tiny and still punch stuff at, legitimately punch stuff at 800 yards and in, 12.56 arc's the, the way to go. Um, if you don't care, right, and, and you don't care about, about larger guns, uh, the 18-inch art will gain you about 100 feet, 150 feet per second. I have found that the, the offerings in between don't typically gain uh, enough for me to care to, to extend them, meaning the, to go to a 14.5 over a 12.5, you're going to jump up 30, 40 feet per second. 16-inch, uh, another 20 feet per second, so on and so forth until you get to 18. So the, the big velocity jumps with arc are going to be at 12.5 and 18 from what I have found. Um, that's why all of them are, that, that I possess are either 18 or 12.5. I really, really like, um, 12 and a half inch guns with cans on them that end up being shorter than full size guns, but still do the same thing. Like what a, what a world to live in, right? Um, that, that's the way I want to live life. That's why I love this thing so much. Would, uh, would I recommend this cartridge for, for everyone? No, because you're not shooting far enough for it to matter anyway, man. Uh, you can absolutely... Like if you're just swacking critters, right? Coyotes, deer, pigs, things like that. You can absolutely, absolutely get that done with, with some of the 556 five, Projo offerings that are out there today. Uh, as long as you're shooting that stuff 300 yards and in, it, it'll get it done, uh, especially 200 yards and in. I feel like six art really starts to shine at like two, 200, 250 and beyond uh, when it comes to putting terminal effects on, on living things. 
but that doesn't mean that inside of that distance it's any slouch either, right? Like it still does some massive, massive damage with uh, with the right Projo. So I say all this to say, man, uh, don't, don't get all wrapped around the axle about needing one of these if you don't need one, but if you do wish that you had a rifle that was smaller in overall size and length, that would maintain better ballistics at distance, that was less affected by, by environmentals, that has better terminal effects, better temporary wound cavities and, and, and stretch cavities and just mess inside. The 6 arc might be your jam, man. Um, I've been really, really tickled to death with it. I like it a lot. Uh, coming up, what we're going to do is we're going to take, so this thing has always kind of been ran either with a uh, LPVO or something similar <clears throat> to this Mark V here just because of the way that I've been using it. But I've, I've kind of got this idea lately that I'd like to see how it works as a carbine. Uh, so I'm gonna slap a dot on this thing and we're gonna run it at some, some 15, 12, 10 splits and see if the taper cartridge can keep up, uh, if the feeding can keep up. So you guys uh, get, get ready for that. And we're gonna continue to test this thing uh, until it fails and see how that, how that works out. Um, I, I don't baby guns. I'm not gonna baby this gun. I'm gonna shoot it like I wanna shoot it. I'm gonna shoot it like I would shoot it if, uh, you know, if I just bought it right off the shelf. Uh, all full vulnerability, y'all, Centurion sent me this thing. Um, so. It's not like it's you know something that I bought, but they, I, I'm not repping it because they sent it to me. I was already shooting a whole lot of six arc before they sent me this, so like I, I love the cartridge even if they didn't send me this, and I probably would end up buying this even if they didn't send me this. Um, so don't don't be weird about that. It's not a shill thing, right? Um, other than that, man, if you're if you're interested in this kind of stuff and you're interested in seeing what happens with it. Uh, go ahead and punch that subscribe button. There'll be definitely some more six arc stuff coming up. I've got this thing signed up for two matches, uh, one in March, one in April of 2023. It'll be running with the big dogs out there, man. Uh, it's already proven itself at, at one match. Um, it's really, really neat to me that I can take a 12 and a half inch suppressed gun and I can run with 22 and 24 inch Valkyries and Creedmoors and 308s and actually be competitive with it. So that, that in and of itself, in my opinion, gives the, the, uh, the six arc a little bit of clout, right? Um, Anyway, other than that, man, that's what I got for you. Hope you enjoyed this. These are just kind of some random thoughts on Six Arc this morning before I get to shooting these things again. And uh, hope you enjoy that. If you got any questions, drop them in the comments box. I'll let you know uh, what I think as best I can. I can't keep up with all the comments on all the videos all the time, but I, I will absolutely try to, to get, uh, get in there and answer some questions if you got them. Other than that, Mark Smith, JBS Training Group, man. See you guys at class.